Yeah, it's true. I confess, I am a teacher. <laughs> and uh, let's see. So it's not going to be too much of a boring lesson. At least I hope not. Uh, but I do want to talk about the zodiac, what it really is. And uh, as as Chelsea did point out, a lot of people will find that your horoscope sign may really have changed over the last two thousand years. And I'm a also an amateur astronomer and uh, amateur telescope maker. And I do classes and I show people how to make telescopes. Actually, that was made by some of my students. Uh, so I bet you didn't know there's more than 12 <coughs> signs in the constellation. How many of you knew that? Okay, that's all right. Yeah, okay. So I'll show you some highlights of the constellations. I got most of these pictures from Astronomy Picture of the Day, which is put out by NASA and so on. So let's see. And I'll try to explain what the, what the zodiac is in the first place. Um, and because a lot of people don't really know, it's it's an imaginary path in the sky, and it's the same path that's being followed by the moon. Anybody notice the moon tonight? Yeah. Yeah. How many know? Yeah. How many of you notice the moon tonight? Yeah. Uh, good for you. Yeah. That other thing above it, did you notice that too? Venus. That's Jupiter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's an imaginary path along which all the planets seem to travel, and people in the old days, they found this out. Um, and so here's a pretty nice diagram. The red is sort of unfortunately washed out. Uh, the zodiac is actually in red here, but you can't really see it very well, and my hands shake from 30 years of dealing with kids and probably drinking too much. <laughs> so this is the ecliptic. That's, that's our, our equator stretched out into space. That's supposed to be the Earth. And if we say that you were born in the sign of Libra or Pisces back there, what that means is that's supposed to be the sun. That's the Earth. If you had x-ray vision, you could see right through the sun to the constellation back there, which would be Pisces. So that would mean you were born in Pisces. That's what it means. And, of course, our, our planet precesses like a top. You've all played with tops when you were a little kid. And you got them to spin, and they sort of wobble. Or oh, like some of you back at the bar there. <laughs> so, uh, so, I don't know if you realize this, but it's summer for us when the North Pole faces towards the sun. It's not because we're closest. Because remember how cold it was on January 4th? Y'all remember that? Yes. The vortex? Well, guess what? That was when we were closest to the sun. I kid you not. So it's not the distance, it's the angle. So since we wobble, the wobbling takes about 25,000 years. In other words, we rotate about a million or two times for a complete circle. And it's kind of hard to explain this. You have to have models, and you have to have it in 3D and all that kind of stuff. But uh, here's, a, here's a pretty good diagram. But the idea here is that the wobble of the precession makes all the signs appear to migrate about one sign every 2,000 years. Unfortunately, astrologers mostly haven't noticed. <laughs> but whatever sign you be, Chances are, it's probably changed. If I was a betting man, actually I like to bet, but I never bothered collecting all the money that I should. <laughs> but if I was to bet, I would bet that 90% of you are a different sign from what you used to be. But keep track, I'll give you the traditional and the modern dates, and you can, uh, and you know, any loved ones, kids, parents, brothers and sisters, whatever. All right, now it's true what the astrologers say. Some of the stuff in the sun can really hurt you. Now this actually was taken only three days ago, this picture. That is a sunspot, and this is the sun. There's some freaky stuff up there. <laughs> and, you know, it's true. Sunspots sometimes kill satellites, and that means, you know, no direct TV, right? No intercontinental phone calls. And anybody remember when Quebec lost all its power back in 1989? Why? Because of a sunstorm. I mean, this is not made up shit. <laughs> but they also can cause beautiful but harmless auroras, also called northern lights. 
show of hands, clap your hands if you've actually ever seen one. It's incredible, isn't it? Um, and of course, there's other stuff in the sky. You, you saw that stuff in Chelyabinsk, uh, Russia. What was it last year, was it? You know, there's meteors coming right at us. Sometimes uh, we don't know they're coming. So, you know, and anybody who's been up on one of these things, I've been to some talks, it's beautiful, but it's dangerous as shit. <laughs> now, wouldn't it be nice if somebody could actually predict in advance if we were going to get be in danger from the skies? Would you ask one of these astrologers? Or would you ask one of these folks, astronomers or something? I don't know, it's a two. <laughs> but here comes the zodiac, and like I said, pay attention to the dates and you'll find out whether you're the right, the sign that you think you used to be. Uh, this is something in the sign called Aries. It happens to be a galaxy. Uh, and right there, that little dot there that I keep holding, thing on steady, that's a supernova. And those are the modern dates, April 19 to May 13. Traditional dates, March 21 to April 19. Uh, and this is a tempest in Taurus. I thought I'd bore you with some alliteration. <laughs> this is the Pleiades, which you can see tonight. It's beautiful. How many people have ever seen the Pleiades, Seven Sisters? It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. That you can see with the naked eye, binoculars, the telescope make it better. I don't know if you can see sort of a red thing over there. You can't see that even a large telescope. You need a camera and all that kind of stuff. It's very difficult to do. Bob back there knows how to do that. He's really good at it. I suck. Uh, and here's a sign of the zodiac. It's called Orion. How many of you knew that Orion was in the zodiac? Bet you did. Actually, I will admit that the sun doesn't go through Orion. But this, the moon and the planets do. So I say it should be in the zodiac. And it goes, the sun is right near that June 18th. By the way, how many of you can recognize Orion? It's got the three stars here. I see a lot of hands. Good, good, good. And to me, that looks like the mummy. But it's not. It's an exploded star. It's in Gemini. And the modern dates are June 20th to July 20th. Traditional dates, May 21st to June 20th. Uh, and this is what a conjunction means. When they talk about that in the horoscope, what it means is Saturn right there and Mars appear to line up pretty close from our point of view. In fact, Saturn, even though it's brighter, is roughly 20 to 30 times farther away than Mars, but Saturn's got those rings and all that bling and stuff in there. <laughs> uh, so it's not like they're really close to each other. Those are the dates. And I hope you're keeping track. Uh, and here are, is a leap in the Leonid meteor shower. You like the alliteration crap. Okay, so that's not, that's not really Leo. Leo's actually over there someplace. So those are the modern dates, August 10 to September 15. And vo violent, voracious vertices in Virgo. And these are two uh, galaxies that are getting ready to collide. What, what that will do to them, I'm not quite sure. And these are the modern dates, and those are the traditional dates. And this is a planet with a really cool name, Zarmina, otherwise known as Gliese 581G. And this, this planet might actually be livable. Uh, I know some people who do uh, a lot of work on finding these things. That's supposedly the star those are made of. That's not really a true picture, okay? Some, some artist's imagination. And, this is Scorpio, or Scorpius, Woo! or Scorpio, and it's one of the very few constellations that looks like the real thing. Have you ever seen a real scorpion? Yeah. They're really cool. They got this real cool tail, and that's its stinger right there. And uh, so over here is Libra, here, and the sun goes through this only for a few days, right around Thanksgiving. And then it goes into something called Ophiuchus. Anybody ever heard of Ophiuchus? A couple of people. Okay, and here's Ophiuchus, and then here we've got Sagittarius, and that's really big. That's my favorite one because you're looking right at the center of the galaxy. Yeah! And here's Capricorn. This is an old-fashioned one, and 
This is Aquarius, with a, those are the dates there. And there's one, two more signs, Pisces, you see the dates there. And the last one, bet you didn't know this, Cetus the Whale. Now it's not in the regular zodiac, it happens to be my wife's birthday and Einstein's birthday. But uh, the sun goes through there on that day. Now once upon a time you could be both an astronomer and an astrologer as Chelsea was saying. So this guy, <coughs> Abu Abdallah Muhammad ibn Musa al-Kharizmi, gave us algebra. <laughs> Hindu Arabic numerals, 2014 instead of MMIV, XIV. And he also gave us algorithms, all that. And Chaucer, you remember him, right? Yeah, yeah. The Canterbury Tales. All kinds of astrology in the Canterbury Tales. And he also gave us the first no how to book on using the astrolabe. Galileo, the inventor essentially of the telescope, his day job involved teaching medical students how to cast horoscopes. <laughs> We've got 25 of his horoscopes, but only two of his original telescopes. But that was 400 years ago. This guy, one of those Arab astronomers, he saw, he thought astrologers were full of shit. Now, one question is how come astrologers don't agree with each other about basic stuff? Yeah. Now, this is traditional female-male stuff, okay? But you have seven astron astrologers, and so the upper left-hand corner, I'm sorry, I'm gonna point to it because I can't hold anything still. So this would mean, does an Aries male get along well with an Aries female? Okay, so he says yes. He says no. He says no. This person says yes, no, yes, no. You're going to take advice from them? I mean, are you serious? Okay. Now, I asked an astrology site for a horoscope for right now, actually 20 minutes ago, uh, today. And this is what I got with some stuff about my personality. And what did they actually get right astronomically? Nothing. Not a thing. And it's not to be right. Okay, here's my two cents. The universe does not revolve around us. It's far stranger than myth. And if there's no physical explanation for anything, it's probably not true. And think about which of them, astronomy or astrology, which one's actually based on evidence, experiment, and observation? I can't do that. <laughs> Maybe you can. And you really should turn off the electronics sometimes, go outside and look up at night. And this is my last slide in memory of John Dobson, this guy over here, who invented this type of telescope. He just died, and these are scenes from my workshop, and that was me, and that's the one in California. And just in case you need the dates, again. Okay.